We are out here at Rockahula Water Park and uh, we found a leprechaun. Oh wait, here he is. <laughs> Lake Dolores. Uh, yeah. We've got Tom, Sean, and this is random. We're way out here, way off the beaten trail and somebody's actually flying a Nevada one. The first generation with Nevada, with the wanker to say the least. So pretty cool, a lot of stuff to fly out here. The winds are perfect. So we're gonna get some drones in the air and then I'm gonna talk about some things that I love about the Avada 2 and some things that I don't love about the Avada 2. Alrighty, so let's talk about some of the things that I love about the Avada 2 and some of the things that I don't. Let's start off first with something that I love. First thing is, I love the brand new camera. The new camera is so much better, way clearer. The quality is closer to that of what we get out of the action cameras. And I think after the Action 4, DJI's sort of, I wanna say their consumer cameras have just gotten so much better. And it definitely shows with the Avada 2. You know, when you really think about it, this place is really sort of neat, that it's in the middle of nowhere, literally the middle of nowhere, and they thought a water park would succeed out here. The refreshing oasis that is the all new Lake Dolores Resort and Rockahula Water Park. Visitors are treated to an atmosphere filled with classic Americana and family fun. Boasting 18 brand new aqua attractions, including the Big Bopper, the world's largest family raft ride, the all-new Rockahula Water Park offers something for everyone. Young and old alike can bask in the sun. Where water really shouldn't be. Uh, this place is pretty decrepit now. A lot of the buildings are pretty much burned down, but it is still a really unique place to fly. All right, now something that I don't like is the fact that we still don't have a dedicated flight camera versus a dedicated recording camera. This was something that I felt was super necessary if you're somebody that films at 24 frames per second or even 30 frames per second. Flying like that and recording is two different things. When you're flying, there's just way too much motion blur. And when you're flying around an area like this, there's a lot of blur. And without having enough of a frame rate to process all that information that you're passing, it makes it more difficult to fly. So I still think DJI missed the boat when it comes to the camera in a sense, because I felt like we still needed a dedicated flight camera versus a dedicated recording camera. So that's something I would love to see change if they ever bring out a third iteration of this, is we need two different cameras. You to the FAA. <laughs> that's a deviation, Jesus, Bob. All right, so note to self, we don't let Bob fly the drones. Holy cow, Bob. <laughs> Almost lost one today. All right, so another thing that I love about the Avada 2 is the battery life. It is really better than the first generation Avada. Now you're getting about 22 minutes of flight out of this and realistically it's more like 18 or so. But when you compare that to the Avada 1, the Avada 1 would honestly struggle with getting like 13 to 15 minutes of flight. Now I know we're complaining about that, and if you look at like standard FPV drones, like my, Cine, my Cinewoops that I build, that is impressive flight time. But having noticeably better flight time and what feels to be a little bit better power coming out of the Avada 2 is definitely a nice thing and something I can really appreciate straight out of the box. All right, so something that I don't like about the Avada 2 is that it's noticeably more fragile than the first generation Avada. I felt like the first generation Avada was a little bit more modular. If you broke something, the repairability aspect of it was easier for you as the end user as to where the Avada 2 seems a little less repairable and it would probably be a good idea to add carry fresh on the Avada 2. 
But of course, a shameless plug, if you do wanna protect yourself or give yourself the best chance to sustain impact, you can always check out the link in the description below and pick yourself up a set of Rib Rider 2s. These are not built for pleasure, they're simply built for protection against those hard impacts that you could have when you're having fun or enjoyment. I know what you're thinking, that probably sounds like a condom commercial. It's not, but it sort of is. Yeah, there goes my, my percentage of female audience, damn it. And if we're just being completely real, a lot of the complaints that we have are super nitpicky and it's really hard to find something that you don't like about this new drone. I mean, you gotta really, really dig deep on things. Unfortunately, as you start using this and as any release goes, you'll start to find out things that are like, I wouldn't say gates, like last year we had tumble gate and the prop snapping gate. These are FPV drones at the end of the day. They are not perfect, they will break. And if you're used to flying GPS drones, that is the idea that you will have to end up shedding because again, unfortunately, these are not perfect. And because they're not perfect, you just gotta deal with those sort of things that could potentially happen. Alrighty, that's gonna do it for this video out here at the Rockahula Water Park. This is always a fun place to go fly. I'm super glad I got a chance to come back and do it with FPV. There's nobody here now, it's just us. So we're gonna head back to Vegas. Hopefully you got something out of this video. And uh, if you enjoy these styles of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, it never hurts to drop it a like. We are super, super close to 100,000 subscribers, I'm trying to get there by the end of April. It's ambitious, but I think we can do it. If not end of April, early May, that would be actually pretty cool too. Um, I'm super stoked. I've been doing this now for 12 years. Seven of the last years have been mostly drone content, and uh, I can't begin to thank all of you enough for the continued support, letting me make the content that I love and to make this my full-time job, so to speak. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, you didn't think we were just gonna walk around now and not go out and explore Vegas. Well, you did, dude. and I are out here. I mean, if we went to that water park, at least they have the Lazy River. You can fly into the oh, river. Yeah, dude. So It's awesome. That'd be good. I've skateboarded in that river with an extra skateboard. Thank God what happened in here didn't happen when I was at that damn water. Can you imagine that? Dude, look at the, the train. I'd frozen up and I was at that water park. 
So fun fact, this is Sean's first time ever driving a Tesla. <laughs> it's weird. Like I haven't even gone more than two miles per hour. It's just, it's weird. There's no engine noise. So we're going to the El Cortez Hotel and Casino, which is actually the oldest hotel and casino in Las Vegas for a little bit more of a nostalgic visit this time. We're doing more of a throwback. Oh, that's so weird. I let off the gas and it just whoosh. Yeah, yeah, because it's got regenerative braking. All right, let's see. You don't have to, you don't have to. Uh, so I hear that it's got, okay, it's, it doesn't have as much whoosh, as I thought it was going. No, I mean, you got to really ramp on it. I so this is our $50 a night hotel room here at the El Cortez. Decided to stay on Fremont oh. Street. And uh, they recently redone this. This hotel is over 85 years old. Not bad, pretty big. It's got a nice little open concept bathroom. Cool little shower thing. Little artwork there. I don't know what that thing is. Looks pretty good though. Nice countertops. Pretty cool. So this is the $16.99, the famous $16.99 prime rib. You get a potato, corn, prime rib. Not too bad. 